Uh, before we actually edit a page, I just want to mention a, a, a convert here. So everything here is all integrated within a, uh, a big database. And every page is an entry in that database. And it actually, just like when you have autosave on a Word document or whatever language that you might be, or whatever program you might use in order to uh, do word processing on your personal computer, um, you have an autosave that happens every, whatever, five minutes, one minute or something like that. I'm not sure what the current standard is of that. We have an autosave going on when you edit a page uh, and it saves that in your cookies, which basically means on your computer. So that if you kill the screen and you pull back up that page, it will pull back everything that was saved in your autosaver. So you, you don't have, while you're doing things online, you don't have to be concerned about a lot of the issues that uh, online activity provides like uh, uh, limited internet access and other things like that that may pop up. The second thing is that for every page that we have, when you manually save, it adds it as an entry to that page. So it makes a history of revisions, okay? From the dawn of time, or at least the dawn of time associated with that page. That means that you can never lose content on a page. You don't ever have to fear that if you've already saved something there, you will never lose it. You can always go back. And you can go back to a page by, uh, I happen to be in humanities, uh, but uh, I will go to a page somewhere in languages. And I'm not sure if Christina Moon's still here, but I'll just pull up one of her books. Uh, and uh, go into a chapter and go into a section. And here is a page that she has uh, put together for her class. It's all in Spanish and I don't read Spanish. So uh, I'm not gonna be able to do much editing on it, but I do know that this was uh, written over time. Like she mentioned a half a year for this and a half year for that for accessibility and other things like that. We can then look at each of those revisions by looking under options, under revision history. And then when you do that for any of your pages, you can go all the way back and see from the very beginning that she originally wrote a, a, uh, the first page up in November 30th, uh, 2019. And you can go each revision by revision that was saved. Okay, some of them are using the bot, uh, which I mentioned before that I did. Some were used by <coughs> manipulating tags. Some were actually uh, doing some edits uh, off of here, like Christine did this uh, and other things like that. And I can go back to any of these edits and just look at what it used to look like. So you can think of this as the way back machine for a page. Uh, and you can go back to any of these things you want. And you can even revert, if I were to click this button right here and, and force that to be the number one version, the most current version of that page. I'm not gonna do that because I'm essentially throwing away all of these revisions. Not actually throwing them away. I just basically reallocate or re, uh, prioritize so something becomes the top here. And then I can revert the revert if I want, but I'm not gonna do so. The, so the whole point of that is not necessarily that you're gonna be using this that extensively, but that you can feel confident that you always have the ability in order to go back to a previous page. So if something breaks, you don't have to be fretting uh, over it. Just revert um, or undo or unsave uh, uh, the equivalent of whatever you wanna to refer to it. And this is exceedingly powerful uh, mechanism for uh, writing and editing, um, uh, especially since it's automatically put in place. So uh, the um, restrict access, it, it just provides the ability of showing people what you want. Uh, so you don't always have all these capabilities, but you have this ability for your page which is important at times. Uh, most of the time, pages are either public, which means everyone can see it, or private, which means that only certain people can see it. There are two options that are in the middle, which I don't want to discuss right now unless we have time in order to go into, that gives you more limited uh, admixture of the two. Like one can see pages, but they can't edit the pages. One can see pages, but they need to have a URL in order to be able to find those pages um, uh, and such. And those are, there are reasons why you want to use them or not. You could find that information right at the top here where it says, okay, this page here was last updated August 1st, 2020 uh, by Nicholas uh, Cresisto, who is the accessibility uh, 
technician that basically uh, that Christina was mentioning uh, that was involved in, in modifying things. Um, it has a status of uh, public. Uh, and this is even an ID number associated with the page. So basically it says that page number 37031 on the Humanities Library is this page. And you can always go to it uh, and find it if you have that number. Even if you don't have this, don't have the whole URL written down here, if you have this number, you can go to it with a, a much more simplistic uh, number off of it. The other thing that you'll notice on this page is licensing. So I mentioned at the start of this, um, uh, the introductory presentation a few hours ago that uh, openly licensed material, OER, uh, intrinsically deals with licensing uh, and primarily Creative Commons licensing. Uh, and you can add the license to pages um, uh, or to a collection of pages by using things that are in the page settings, which I'm going to open up in a moment. But first, I want to just uh, talk about what happens when you select a license for a page. When you do so, you're essentially designating what the permissions are that people have in order to use the content that's available, uh, that's on the page, and you're designating that. In some circumstances, you don't have the rights to change the license on a page if it happens to be content that you do not own. Uh, <clears throat> uh, and in some cases, you have the rights to change the license on the page as long as we indicate what the original content was uh, appropriately. Um, so in this case here, it's a CC by NC share alike, uh, and you can see it right here. If you click on here, it then pulls up the actual license itself of what's going on here. Again, to talk about licensing, I need a whole session in order to, to go about uh, appropriately because it's a little bit more complicated. And there's some really cool features that we're going to be releasing in terms of handling licensing and making sure that people use it properly on our site. Okay. Um, but nonetheless, you can manually construct those things or uh, modify the license under page settings. So page settings you can think of as a, as a page up or section up of options that you have available in order to tweak up and provide additional meta information for it. Josh mentioned this before with the remixing a little bit. Um, so the number one thing that you have on the page settings is the opportunity to make a page summary. Yeah. So you can come in and you can write a page summary that you want. And that page summary is useful because when you do a search on topics, it will show you the page summary. So it's convenient in order to know what a page represents by the page summary. It also shows up when you look at the table of contents on the page uh, when you write it down here. This one doesn't have a page summary off of it. Then we have the ability of indicating the author. So if we, and this right here, we have to manually do on our site to introduce authors. So if you make content that you want to have uh, an, an author bar, which is what this little bar right here is designated for you because it's your content and you want to show it, you let us know and we build an author bar that you can then select the author uh, bar and it auto here and it automatically changes the, um, the author bar for you. Again, that's something that we have to do on our side because it's a little bit of programming off of there. Ignore cover page. That's just used in order to say it's the very top page of your book. Um, and, and it's just a designation in order to make sense of the book. But this is the one that's a more uh, that's connected to that licensing. So we can select any of a range of licenses out there. And we'll modify this slightly to include license numbers uh, soon uh, <clears throat> that you can designate. So you can do CC BY, CC BY SA, SA, ND, SA, et cetera. You can even go to all rights reserved, which we strongly suggest you don't do because that's not openly licensed. Uh, and then you can even do other licenses that were that either predated uh, Creative Commons or were modified from a, a predated uh, license, like the GNU GPL or GNU FDL licenses, which are not uh, popular, the more boutique uh, licenses out there, but they are still content that we have licensed off of there um, and such. Uh, and the, uh, then you have public domain, which is the creme de la creme of open licenses, which has no limitations off of that. Uh, <clears throat> by indicating this thing, uh, it pops us down here and it provides a mechanism to ensure that we handle the legality associated with uh, the licenses, which with the current version of Creative Commons license means that we have a link out to uh, their site. There are a few other things on here that are particularly important. There's a table of contents that you see here. You can remove those table of contents uh, in the uh, summary by just saying no to the table of contents. It will sometimes, sometimes when you click these things, they'll give you an option to make it to sub pages that you do everything below sub pages. I'm going to uh, do that. Now, oftentimes you have to refresh the screen 
in order to reload it. Uh, but then, oh, what I, oh, if I say no and I refresh the screen, you'll see that license goes away, uh, that table of contents goes away. So if you find the table of contents annoying, you can get rid of it. If you find it, if you like it there, you can do that. I'm just going to put that back because I don't want to step on Christina's toes, uh, otherwise she'll get mad at me um, and such. And if I refresh it, you'll see it pop back again. So, so this is an indication of how you can use meta tags in order to manipulate how uh, pages are set up. There are a few additional features on here. Uh, I saw Josh mentioned a little bit about uh, the readability tools. Uh, I'm not sure if he mentioned the Beeline Reader. Did you, Josh, or did anyone mention Beeline Reader? No, no, I did not. So while the top part here is associated with trying to improve uh, the visibility of the uh, page, or at least customize the visibility of the page for certain viewers, we have an additional feature on our system, which is what's called Beeline a Reader, which provides us the opportunity in order to address, it was designed largely for dyslexic students, uh, dyslexic readers, but provides the opportunity in order to uh, do some. So if, let's say I switch to, I, I click this button here, uh, and then you look at these pages, so what you'll see is that this text goes from black to blue, blue to black, black to red, red to black. And it looks sort of weird uh, to us. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, this, is a, a, this is like providing a guide uh, to people who are dyslexic that have a, a, a difficulty in order to uh, understand or recognize when one line starts after a second line. You know at the end of one line, go to the next line down off of that. Um, and there's evidence that this is also beneficial, not only for dyslexic students, but for um, dyslexic viewers, but also for non-dyslexic viewers, because it can accelerate reading quite quickly. And there are a lot of people who like using or switching to this tool in order to be able to uh, provide that, uh, that opportunity um, out there. I'm going to <coughs> turn it off. There are a few other options here if, they, if you want uh, in order to do that. The last of this before we get into the nitty gritty detail of commenting, and there are a few additional features I want to skip over, uh, is that uh, you can also tag up your uh, OER program. So if you want to look and say this is this is material that came from OpenStax or came from Galileo, we can lock it down uh, off of that. In the near future, many of these options will go away in that you won't have the option in order to change it, that only developers will have the option to change it and that's locked down uh, into the, the content. But right now it's openly available uh, for you to go about doing so. So um, uh, I think these other ones can be postponed into the uh, next section here. One thing that I do wanna mention here is that we do have a construction guide uh, <clears throat> uh, that's available. If you Google it, you could find it. But if you look under developers, when you log in on the sidebar here, you'll have the construction guide and the table of contents is right here, ready to go. So for example, if you want to look at basic editing, which is what we're dealing here, this is the section chapter three of basic editing. Um, so the first step is successful logging in, which is exceedingly important in order to step you through <coughs> step you through how to go about doing that. And then you can go to the next uh, section on um, the editor and various components of that. This is uh, worthwhile in order to have available uh, or at least handy for you to be able to access as you need in order to be able to move things forward. And again, you see it under the developer section after you're logged in. If you don't log in, you don't have developer. You also have a handful of other things here that I don't want to go into right now um, that uh, you could tap into. The key point is the access to the construction guide that you have right there. So with that being said, and we have a little bit of an overview of things, uh, let's uh, get going into actually editing content on a page. So I want to edit content on a page. So I'm gonna go to my sandbox by clicking underneath my name, um, and I'm gonna see what's in my sandbox. Uh, and I have a lot of stuff. Um, and let's, let's go to this uh, book. Um, which was made a long time ago. Uh, and uh, here are sections in this chapter. Uh, I'm going to go to this, this thing right here, which is, even uses abnormal names because this is a, a relic of stuff. Let me go to um, actually let, Let's go to this one. Um, this one was came in. So this is a um, environmental chemistry book that we're bringing in, a, a green chemistry book, <clears throat> I think. 
it should be, but maybe this is not quite right. Um, anyways, it's a book uh, that that's it, that's in my uh, sandbox at some point, uh, and I go to a page, and this is the page I want to edit, which is uh, three point two uh, on here. This page is forked. Let me phrase it. This page is copy transcluded, which you can tell because it has this little icon right here, which means that the content, again, is not stored on this page. It's stored somewhere else. Now, in order to find out where it is, I need to edit this page, which I can do under uh, by pressing the edit button on the bar here, or I can do control E. Uh, so sometimes I'll switch to that uh, thing. And then it has this code that tells you that this content is really stored somewhere else. And here's a, a link to it that you can click on it and press on it. And this really goes to where the content is stored. Now, that means if I were to edit content on this page, it will be automatically reflected on the page in my book because again, it's transcluded. So if I go into uh, this page at Furman University uh, and I decide that I want to destroy everything because I don't like how South Georgia or South Carolina voted because uh, this is at Furman University and I save it. Okay, so hopefully uh, no student is using that, that specific page right now because they're gonna have it gutted down. Um, if I come in here and I refresh the page, you'll see that that gutting has been reflected here because again, it's tied together. I'm gonna go back and revert it uh, using uh, the revision capabilities of that. Uh, so I'm gonna revert it to here. It takes a moment, goes to the database, finds that revision, pops it over and spits it out. And that takes a handful of seconds because it's a little bit more uh, painful. Uh, and lo and behold, we go back to the pristine version of the book uh, that's there. And this thing is locked together because it's a copy transcluded version of the book. Now, let's say I want to edit this on my page. Now, I can't edit it when it's copy transcluded. I need to fork it. Uh, which is the term that we say to convert this into a copied version of the page that I can edit, not just a transcluded version that's off of that. And a simplified way in order to do that is either to press the icon here or to go under options and you press the forker. Uh, whichever one you do, you'll fork the page um, and I will just click it here because it's open and it'll give you a little warning telling you that you're going to be forking the page, um, which is fine. Uh, and then you, uh, you press OK. It tells you it's successful, that it's forked. It will reload the page and it doesn't look like anything has happened, um, which is true. The only difference that you can tell right now is that you don't have that icon right there because we just forked the page. But if we edit the page, now you'll see that you have the content that we're able to edit here. So it's completely forked. So the most important thing to know is that you can't edit a page that's copy transcluded. You have to fork it first and then copy it. The remixer automatically makes everything copy transclude for you, which means every time you want to edit a page, you need to fork it before editing it. Um, and that's important in order to preserve it so that if you don't want to edit anything on the page, there's no reason to duplicate that page because that expands our library so it's bigger and it makes it more difficult in order to curate it. Because if I go in and I modify and fix this thing and this page is copy transcluded, it automatically gets updated from it. And that's good if I'm a subject matter expert and I'm improving it. But if I wanna customize this for my own needs, separate from uh, Elizabeth uh, Gordon's uh, uh, system, so it's not an update or a curation, it's a customization, then you want to separate them and uh, run with it that way. So anyways, now I have this modified. There's a little bit of additional code at the top here where it came from, which we probably don't need anymore uh, since we have a new system that's coming out soon. And I have the ability to edit this. Now, every page that we have has a front end that's a GUI interface. That's what we're looking at here, a graphical user interface, or WYSIWYG is probably a better term for describing it. But really, it's stored in this underlying web code called HTML. You can look at HTML code by pressing this right here. Now, if this scares you, you are not alone. Uh, this right here is the markup language that runs most of the internet, um, along with some other code in order to make it work. Uh, and it takes a while in order to master this. We try to use a very minimalist HTML code base so it's not complicated and it's easy in order to modify, uh, which makes it useful for multiple people to remix and, and benefit from that. But it doesn't mean that, it, but we do have some levels of complexity in order to make the power of what we want to do, especially the stuff that um, will be discussed in the third hands-on meeting uh, tomorrow. 
anyways, let me flip back to visual. Uh, and this right here is the editor. Now, again, this editor, or this is the WYSIWYG uh, perspective. Again, this editor you may have already seen before because if you have Canvas as your learning management system, it's the same editor used in Canvas. It's also used in a variety of other websites out there. Okay, so it has a handful of various components off of it. Um, if you go to, again, the uh, construction guide and under basic editing, and you go to editing a page, it gives an overview of that editor and what each of the options uh, mean. Most of them are relatively straightforward, okay? Obviously save and cancel uh, means you save it or you kill the editor. This is undo and to redo. These are headings which are necessary in order to uh, make distinction of blocks. So a heading has a bigger text, bigger color. Bold, italics, underline. Uh, this right here uh, is the is the font, <clears throat> is the color of the font. This is uh, uh, changing the background of them. Um, this right here is a remove format, which removes all formatting. So if I were to do this, it removes that completely. That's the one button I really wish that word had, but it doesn't. Uh, it has then bullets, uh, numbering, it has justification, it has uh, indentation. This right here, you don't have Typically, uh, on your word bar, it gives you the ability to hyperlink or make links out to other pages, whether they're on our site or off our site. Although I encourage you to keep it on our site mostly because that because we can maintain the integrity of it. We have the ability in order to uh, upload images, to make tables, uh, and then in this case here, it's a search infrastructure. Um, uh, then we have two additional buttons here, which are not uh, on this editing bar because I didn't make it here. One lets you import a question from the query library. That's relatively new, like 24 hours. And then we can also embed a um, um, executable code via Jupyter right here. This one up here are some pull down menus of particular importance. Uh, editing gives you many of those capabilities. Uh, view gives you those capabilities, which are not important. These have a few additional aspects that are relatively straightforward because they're already written down there. Style gives you certain styles off of here. Don't worry about these things. And we're starting to transition into something that's a little bit more useful because it's an online uh, infrastructure than less uh, um, that you don't really get when you do things offline. Elements have some advanced feature and components often too, including the ability to do video. It has the same button as, actually we don't have video up here. Video, making hyperlinks, making anchors, images and tables, but templates are one of the more advanced things that we'll be talking about. And then you, all, and then you have help uh, off of there. So that was a roundabout longish introduction to the editor. Um, but again, if you have some comfort in editing in Word or Google Doc, um, uh, or even in Canvas or any other learning management system, you should have comforts in order to do the most of the content that we have here. So the number one thing is that this is a WYSIWYG approach. So you can come in and you can type uh, things down here, uh, and it completely shows up uh, off of that. I can save it. And this saves as a revision to my code. And there he, there he goes in all its glory uh, for a continuous spectrum off of that. I can re-edit it. I can then do the various things I want to do, like make this bold, make this thing italics, uh, and make this thing uh, highlighted in green. So it starts to look exceedingly ugly because I've thrown a lot of different formatting on there, but nonetheless, you have the options in order to be able to customize these things. Now, the button I love the most is the nuclear response, which is the ability in order to come in and just erase all formatting, uh, and it all goes away. The one button I really wish Word would, would implement into their system. So we have that ability and you can write in, uh, text uh, off of here. You can copy and paste from other pages. You can copy and paste from other source material. But if you bring stuff out from, uh, from the Libre text, you want to make sure that you handle the licensing appropriately. You can't just copy anything like, let's say that you want to go to CNN.com, which is depressing right now, uh, but not super depressing. And let's say you want to copy this text right here. Uh, am I I able to copy that? No, let's do that. I'm copying that text off of here. I can copy and I can paste here. Uh, and lo and where are we? Uh, just let me, sometimes they, okay, and you paste it into here and you can save it. Does anyone have a problem with what I just did? Let me phrase that. Does anyone agree that I did something legal. 
Very legal. Very legal or very illegal? Legal. It's not legal. The content on a, on a page, unless it has a very clear openly licensed requirement that says it gives me permission in order to be able to copy, I have to assume that it is uh, all rights reserved which means that CNN does not give me any rights to copy and paste any of the text that they have that constitutes intellectual property or even ethical scholarly activities and paste it and use it myself here. Even if I, uh, if I were to attribute it appropriately, then you could start to uh, uh, extend into what's called fair use, but let's avoid fair use off of there. What I just did was illegal. So when you are building your content, make sure that you are uh, very carefully using the appropriately licensed material uh, off of there. If you construct stuff yourself, you are the author and you're the one that's able to designate what type of license you want to use. Uh, <clears throat> uh, in contrast to uh, steal, uh, not stealing, but that's essentially what I did uh, off here. So I don't, I shouldn't have done this. So yes. Can you link to, can you post a link to that content? You can, uh, and you're you're perfectly legally allowed legal. to do that. Uh, there, there is no such thing as stopping you from uh, making a link, although some people like to pretend that you, you need to get permission to link to pages, but that's complete uh, horse bucky. Uh, you can link to any page you want legally uh, 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 off of there. Um, so let's say I wanted to do that. So I take this this page here, and you can see I've been looking at Star Trek uh, uniforms. Don't ask me why. Um, uh, so I can edit this page. And I can make this junk right here into a hyperlink. So I use this link button right there. And it comes up with some options in order to look at it on our site. But ignore that. Right here it says link to. And I just paste the URL into it. And now it makes a link up. It's uh, right now by default is colored as uh, blue. Uh, and then it's ready to go. Uh, so that right there is legal. This right here is illegal. If I reference it and if I cite, cite it properly, I might be able to argue it's fair use, um, but some people can debate about that. Um, that was my next question. I was assuming that we were citing the work. So yeah. it's okay, got it. So even if, yeah, even if you cite it, you still, it's a fair use is, is a mucky, mucky area uh, uh, to, to avoid off it. So I strongly encourage people to just essentially, uh, unless it's scholarly important, I mean, really good, uh, be very careful about, I mean, just be careful in, in copying stuff. Uh, and that, that was the whole point off of those things. And the, the legality and the licensing and things like that, again, this is a long discussion in order to be able to do that. So. Um, let's get into a few uh, of the other things that are involved in here. So what we did is we copied and pasted. We made a, uh, a link off of here. Let's add an image. So I'm going to edit here and I want to add an image onto my page. There are two ways of doing that. Uh, the number one page, uh, one way is to click this button right here in our image. And then you just provide a link uh, to the image. I can browse to my site and find an image or uh, sorry, attach a file. I can either grab images across our library or I can add a file. Uh, so I'm going to do that uh, and I'm going to see what type of files I happen to have on my desktop. And uh, I'm going to use Michaela. So I'm going to upload that one. It uploads it. Uh -oh. Okay. That's good. Okay. Uh, and then I just uploaded Michaela, who is a collaborator of mine on the uh, homework system. Uh, and now it's been uploaded to the page uh, and I can save it. Uh, and there we have an image. Now, the, the you can look at the bottom of any page uh, and you'll see the attachments associated with the page right here when you log in. So it says that this is the file that was uploaded. Uh, I can even add a description, which I didn't do. Like, uh, I always forget how to spell Michaela's name. Uh, I can do something like that. That pulls up in searches when I make that set up there. Gives me some more information about what's going on, just like a revision. Uh, and here it is. Um, I have the ability in order to expand this and contract it however I want. I can double click on this and open up a properties window. The properties window is associated with the image and it gives me the ability if I want to make it certain sizes. Um, 
uh, if I want to make it responsive, which ignore or customize because I varied it, I can even manually give in the point size that I want uh, off of that. I can even dictate the alignment off of that. And I can add the alt text. Okay. And I save it. So now I've just added the alt text to handle the accessibility requirement for the image, which we need to do uh, from top uh, to the bottom. Um, let me, let me focus a couple other things before we uh, transition here. Uh, you can add a table up by just uh, selecting this and say, I want a four by four or four by five table. Uh, and there it pops up. Uh, and then you can go into each of these entries and uh, modify that. You can introduce a video in a similar way. We don't have a button up here. You have to go under elements and go under video. And there you just do a search under something like Biden, okay? It does a search through YouTube. Uh, it, you can embed other videos and you look at all the ones that Biden uh, comes up with uh, via their API, which will be a lot. So let's say I pump, I select this video, I select it. Oh, I, okay. And I insert the video and there it is. Um, I'm gonna make this a little bit smaller and I'm gonna save it. And now I've inserted a video into the, the site. Uh, it ver it makes it automatically center justified, which is how uh, our style is set up here while this one is not. Um, uh, and, uh, and there you go. Uh, we'll again go into this uh, on the hands-on as we start to uh, move through here, but I just wanna make sure I emphasize the primary components that you'll be uh, dealing with. Um, let me mention one last thing before, I, uh, before we go to the uh, um, the breakout rooms, um, and that is uh, the image. So what I just did is I added an image. Uh, what do you think a difference is between an image and a figure? I'm getting Socratic here with my classes here. So the, uh, an image is just a picture. A figure is an image with a caption. Uh, and there's a distinction between the two because uh, I just threw in a figure here, but I didn't have any caption associated with that. Now I can come in and write down something like figure one, um, a pretty computer uh, with a uh, red shirted uh, woman. Okay, and I could save that. And that looks like you've done a caption. Uh, and you have, it looks like exactly what you expect a caption to be, although probably not quite as eloquent as you may want to do that, but we want to be able to tie them together in our code. So this is always connected to this. And that requires uh, a slightly different code, uh, which is called a figure block. Uh, and we introduce a figure block uh, under the elements component here and their template. And then we have several templates that we have available to, including making boxes for like asides and exercises and examples, which I will get into or we can get into in the breakout room because I'm going a little late here. Uh, but you have these options for figures. I'm just going to select the top one. And it just basically adds a figure block. And center means it's center on the screen and center when you print it up on PDF. And it gives you an empty spot. I can copy this and paste the image there. And now I've added this caption here, which I can then co copy and paste right there. One last thing before I end. Um, so if I save this thing, now the program uh, always knows that this text is connected to this image. It also means that when we print this up in PDF, it won't try to separate the two. And it does make it convenient for us to be able to do searches off of that. And it uses what's called HTML5 uh, approach for doing these things. One last thing, uh, which is relatively simple, you'll see this code here available. Now you may remember I, uh, I mentioned, at least in my breakout room, and certainly a few times here, that when you change the number of your, uh, let's see here. So you look at the page number here, this is 3.2 right there. Okay, you'll see that this automatic code uh, makes this number 3.2.1. Uh, 
if I were to come in and modify this and make this uh, some very large number, okay, and I refresh the screen, it will automatically change that number uh, here. Did I put a letter in there too? I guess I did. Okay, that makes it convenient that when you put this code there, instead of a hard numbered number, hard coded number, you can now move and rearrange figures, uh, uh, pages up using the remixer, and it automatically adjusts everything inside the page, or at least the ones that use that code. And that right there is one of the real powers of remixing with some additional technologies onto it. So let me edit the page. Uh, that code comes up uh, in the templates section. Um, uh, but it also comes up uh, in various other sources of there. So you can come in and say, instead of making it, uh, you know, number 1121 of page 3.12, blah, 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 uh, I can modify this uh, as you want. It does not automatically increase it. So you can have two different figures that have the same number off of here, but it uses a three number system. Now that's a little bit more awkward than what people are used to in terms of a standard text, which we're used to figure 2.5 or 2.7. But I argue it's actually much easier when you say figure 2.5.9, you essentially know that that's the ninth figure on the page 2.5, whatever I said. So you know instantly where you're, so you're not flipping around in order to say, where is this actual figure uh, existing? You know exactly what page to go to and then you can find it really quickly. Uh, it provides a mechanism for easy remixing and easy finding uh, and it's exceedingly powerful off of that. So with that, uh, that is a general overview of editing. Um, that there are lots of standards and other issues that are involved in that. Uh, uh, <clears throat> it takes a while in order to master it. And certainly uh, I didn't talk about any of the advanced features like uh, making equations uh, or embedding any, edit, any more advanced stuff like interactive molecules and such. Um, and that will be discussed uh, uh, tomorrow. Uh, or if you want to, we can discuss it in the breakout room. So with that, if you go to the, uh, not that one, if you, if you go to your sandbox and you go into the entry of, um, uh, sorry, your mine's slightly different because I'm logged in as an admin. Um, you'll see the the activities associated with the hands-on editing uh, under the LibreFest 2020, and that's essentially what we're going to be starting uh, or uh, uh, moving through to make sure you have these basic aspects, and then we can go into any other questions associated in the breakout room. So, does anyone have any questions before we start the breakout room? I see discussions in the chat, but I haven't been. I'm monitoring it. Uh, there's not a whole lot. Uh, um, well, let's go ask through quick, here. Ask a quick question. So wait, so if I like if I I use Desmos a lot for my class for my math classes, and I like to make a lot of um, figures that have that, you know, use parameterization to show animations like right. You know, a sine wave going around the unit circle. So will I be able to embed a figure like that in there so that the student can hit the play button and see the animation going on within the page in LibreText? Yes. Okay, so, so they don't have to go range, to the other link. There's a range of, there's a range of different uh, uh, technologies that you have available uh, to. Uh, so Desmos essentially I'm not up on Desmos uh, off the top of my head. I, I had some some things set up for uh, them. Um, the it, it has the ability in order to uh, either run on their server. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that also gives you the ability in order to make a, a, a JavaScript uh, code that you can embed on your site, but I'm not entirely sure. Um, yes, you can. Okay. Yes, you can so, do that. You can. So any, any JavaScript. So th this is, comes into the advanced things. Any JavaScript that you have, that uh, as long as you don't have conflicts with JavaScript capabilities, you can actually embed uh, a JavaScript uh, code directly into here. Um, again, you have to deal with conflicts of of other things that are running, uh, but you can do that. Uh, what I'm trying to look up is I had I had created a des. Uh, I created a Desmos uh, entry for my quantum mechanics class uh, a year, year and a half ago to show you uh, exactly that. Um, uh, but let me take a look and see how I, I don't think I 
Okay, so right now I'm embedding from my Desmos account uh, and not directly into it. So the code is very simple. Um, uh, and that works perfectly fine in order to be able to do the interaction uh, uh, off of here, which I'm going to be using this next week in my, uh, my quantum mechanics class. Um, um, so the answer is yes. Uh, the, the, I have not uh, uploaded the JavaScript, separated JavaScript from the, the, the other entry, um, but I don't envision that to be a problem. Um, um, you just posted the, the you, you just put the link to the, that was just the link to the thing, or did you actually like actually have to write out some JavaScript using? No, like, no, no, no. So, so uh, when you, this, this, this is a, it's equivalently a link. It's an iframe, which basically means that I, uh, <coughs> I'm not, it, when you have your, your, it, it, it's a little bit more code, but it's, it's barely anything. Uh, so it designates that this thing is uh, meant to be embedded. Uh, let me check to see if this does what I think it does. Um, uh, you didn't, you didn't go through yeah. and learn, you didn't use jo uh, Desmos's API. No. To call well, that. I, I mean, so, so basically it, it has some sort of export. I mean, I made it a couple of years ago, so I don't remember exactly how to do it, uh, but it has some sort of uh, embed option or you can just copy largely this code right here um, and it will uh, can do it. And you can see I made a, a sort of a caption to go around it. Yeah, I see. I, um, I see so this, it is, yeah, this is super simple uh, in order to do that uh, and, and run it. My opinion is I have a strong desire in order to make things uh, centralized, uh, so you're not relying on other systems. But Desmos is a really solid system uh, in order to operate uh, so and, and run. And, and when they update their stuff, it updates our stuff. Like I said, I, my philosophy is not to operate like that by status quo, but you can, you can do so. Uh, and Desmos is just one option. GeoGebra, you can do the same thing. Uh, mm -hmm. or, um, or a range of other advanced JavaScript uh, uh, enabled capabilities in order to integrate into our system. Uh, I just don't have off the top of my head a GeoGebra uh, uh, implication off of that. Um, I so don't know, I don't use GeoGebra can, too. Yeah, if, you can embed it, <laughs> if you can embed it into a website, you can embed it into our site uh, is basically. Okay, cool. Um, there's no limitations associated with that. Nice, all right, thanks. Okay, um, let me just make sure I address these things things before we let these things go. Um, uh, I think there's more remixing questions that happened while I was doing it. Edit them. Okay, do you want to edit them with the original content? Okay, I think most of these things are relatively, uh, have been addressed uh, during this thing. So how about we go into our chat, uh, in our chat rooms, our um, breakout rooms, uh, and then uh, go through that, that, uh, that list of activities that we have here on the pages that you've created in the remixing uh, hands-on workshop. Sound groovy? Thank <laughs> you.